have no idea what my people have been through. So, you're really, really an 80s fan. <laughs> okay, Pee Wee, here's some more stuff for you. <laughs> I'm becoming Brundle Fly. It's I Love the 80s Strikes Back. And this is 1986 again. The flicks. <laughs> the fashions. The trends. The tunes. The TV. I love you all. <gasps> A totally awesome year that gave us even more burning questions. What was Seth Brundle doing with his body parts in The Fly? Oh, my ear. Oh, my nose. My left testicle. Oh, no! What have I done to myself in the name of science? Did Bon Jovi invent Jersey hair? I was afraid of the hair. And is there anything funnier than see Thomas Howell in blackface? Get down! Does he look black? No! At the outside, he looked like an East Indian person with an afro. I would like a scholarship. The answers to those questions, plus the worst duck movie disaster in history. What are you, crazy? I saw this movie, Did the Duck Talks! And the super caffeinated power of Jolt Cola. <laughs> because you can't get enough 80s. <laughs> because you still have those L.A. gear high tops in your closet, admit it. This is 1986 Strikes Back. I love people's Playhouse. Really creative, really awesome. Today's secret word is house. <laughs> they had the word of the day, so it was like you could watch it in the morning and the rest of the day annoy everyone because you knew the word of the day. You all remember what to do whenever anyone says a secret word, right? Scream! That's right! Pee-wee's Playhouse. <laughs> it's one of the funniest shows ever on television. <laughs> It was just like this guy that was like a kid, but he was an adult, so he had his own house. House? Ah! And he had all these friends that were kind of like just objects, but they came to life. Pee wee! It's hip to be square! It's like a demented children's show for and adults. It's basically like Mr. Rogers on acid. Peekaboo! Hey, Cherry, what are you doing? I'm cleaning the lid off my plush. Cherry? Come on. Awesome. Pee wee! Yes, Mr. Bob! Miss Yvonne, the most beautiful woman in the world. All set. Wow! Lawrence Fishburne played Cowboy Curtis. Woo! And all the crazy people who come at the door. I love fruit salad. Then why don't you marry it? Also, I remember, why don't you just marry it? <laughs> and I remember one time he loved fruit salad so much, and then they were like, why don't you marry it, Pee Wee? All right, then. I will. And <laughs> <laughs> he did. That is so cool. <laughs> Paul Rubens did what a lot of entertainers can only dream of doing, creating a great kids show that kids like to watch, but adults love watching as well. It was truly hilarious. <laughs> awesome. Sitting at the driving on a Saturday night. Oh my good lord. Do these still exist? Wow. Jolt Cola. Jolt has all the sugar and twice the caffeine. Twice the caffeine. How good is that? How 80s is that? This is so wrong. All the sugar and twice the caffeine. Great. Get the shakes. Just feeling the same. Jolt Cola, man. The uh, ludicrous nature of Jolt Cola made me try it. Which well, seems like a dare, doesn't it? I was scared of Jolt Cola. Of course, Jolt Cola was uh, pre my drug days. Anytime you take one sip and it straightens your posture, that's a little too much. Hey, one sip, what are you doing? I'm getting my Jolt on. This thing would knock your testicles up your rear end. They said it would help you stay up all night to study for exams. And it helped me stay up all night, but I didn't study for exams. I just watched TV and masturbated. <laughs> it's for the addict within, you know? Don't do your drug today. Try some jolt. 
Good idea, Joel. You Still around, aren't you, buddy? For your right. <sighs> I like it. Those are boys. Yeah, Jersey oh, yeah. boys. I'm a big Bon Jovi fan. Bon Jovi in 86. Slippery when wet. Woohoo! Slippery when wet, 1986. It was the year of uh, New Jersey. Cause I'm a cowboy. On a John had it going on. He had the hip hair. He had huge hair. I was afraid of the hair. I was kind of like... Ladies, this guy looks like a woman with his big crazy hair and his tight jeans. The guy looks like he's smuggling a chihuahua in there. He not only had an eye for the ladies, he had an eye for the acid washed. <laughs> hey man, why just wear acid washed jeans, vest, shirt, when you can also wear the overcoat? He had the long cloak, a lot of rags on the mic stand, you know. He rocked some white fringe boots. That's crazy. We used to wear very bad clothes. I can tell you. I had some LA gears. I thought I was rocking it. I thought I was hot. Oh my gosh. I had the hottest LA gear on the planet. Oh my gosh. What crap du jour was that? <laughs> I think I was in first grade. I was so styling. I loved it. <laughs> if you didn't have those, you were laughed off the playground. They had three colored laces, black, pink, and white. And I just thought I was so cool. No one had my LA gear. I had sparkle, gray, black, and white all in one sneaker. Being from Southern California, LA gear was not cool. You know what I'm saying? They were really cool. They had that squiggly, like, signature L.A. gear. I remember L.A. gear. I wasn't going to wear the L.A. gears. Yeah, I wouldn't wear this. That's not cool. Maybe somebody from Wisconsin might think they're cool. Being from Nebraska and moving out to L.A., you know, it's, as soon as L.A. gear hit the Midwest, I was like, I got to be out there. In your video. If you be my bodyguard, I can be all on. That was the dopest video ever. They were basically in a white room. See, we like simple things back in the 80s. Chevy was making his Chevy faces, which even in 86 were wearing a little thin, as thin as, say, Paul's hair. I was envious. I was, I was like, whoa, those guys can really, really not dance. It was not it was a very good video, really. Just some old comedian dancing around. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't called out. I think Paul Simon felt a little bit uncomfortable without Art Garfunkel, so he got a tall substitute with less frightening hair. Paul apparently has an affinity for taller, less talented men. Who's next? Shaquille O'Neal? Coming up, the return of a great American art form. So he was in blackface? That's not offensive, is it? Plus, the cultural relevance of walk like an Egyptian. Have you been to Cairo? They walk like this. And impure thoughts about Rainbow Bright. Can you shut the camera off, please? Next, on I Love the 80s Strikes Back, 1986. And now, for Donal Logue's unfinished thoughts on Bon Jovi. I remember he had one of those, like, harness things attached to his ass where he'd come flying across the stage with the mic saying, Woo! Woo! I'm flying! And I land in my acid wash, and then I rock out for the girls. And here comes Richie. Mm, Richie's rocking out, and I'm rocking out, and then boom, we move together. Of 1986. Because this boy too is love without a reason, I, Boy George, console you with the breakup songs of 1986. No one is to blame by Howard Jones. Head 
Don't Dream It's Over by Crowded House. If you love me, don't leave me now. Please don't take my heart away. If you leave by OMD. The breakup songs of 86. Aren't you prepared to let go now? Mom, Dad, there's something I have to tell you. I'm black. <gasps> I'm a soul man. Look, 86 was a great year for blackface. Nobody's going to deny that. C. Thomas Howe wants to get into college, but his parents won't pay for it. I've decided to let you pay your own way. So he pretends to be black so he can get a scholarship. Congratulations, Mr. Watson, and good luck at heart. Thank you, sir. So he was in blackface? That's not offensive, is it? You have no idea what my people have been through. Does he look black? No! What's happening, brother? I don't care how much shoe polish they want to put on that kid's face. That was a white boy. Get at the outside, he looked like an East Indian person with an afro. I would like a scholarship. Nice to meet you, Kareem! I, I just love that everybody around him was fooled. Because I wasn't fooled. <laughs> What's astonishing to me is that those people at Harvard would meet him and actually go, Totally, he's a total black man. I mean, in Harvard, aren't they supposed to be smart? You've got to work twice as hard as these little white James Earl Jones didn't realize he was wearing blackface. But <laughs> Are you wearing blackface? You're a black student, then sit down. But Ray Don Chong. Ow. Friday in the library. You want to study on a Friday night? Ray Don Chong fell for it. That's what's really great. It was good acting. The one thing that I do love is the, ba the basketball scene where they're picking sides. We got Washington here on a coin toss, so we're gonna take Leon. That's Watson. It's so blatantly racist. <laughs> but I just was like, it's, I love it because it's just so bad. I have to give them their props that it was funny. It made me laugh out loud. Oh, Rainbow, how I've missed you. Oh my goodness, Rainbow Bright. I think our head, no, I'm sorry, it's the exorcist. Love Rainbow Bright. I used to dress like Rainbow Bright. She's always scared me a little bit. <laughs> it could be the yarn hair. I like that her hair is made out of yarn. You know, so often with these dolls we get synthetic hair. Hair that feels bad to the touch. Not rainbow. You have a lot more going for you, Rainbow Bright. You don't have to wear a teeny little skirt and panties to show off how important you are. Can you leave us alone for a minute? Oh, I forgot to ask your name! Well, the part of the cartoon for Rainbow Bright is that she basically saves the world from becoming black and gray from murky. Murky and lurky. Murky. Murky. Very simple plot, really, just that the world needs color. And they were all colors of the rainbow. <laughs> so we put all the color in the world. Colors make you happy. Can you shut the camera off, please? I remember patio green. I spring cleaning. Who was... I think she was supposed to be Irish. Red Butler. I'm Red Butler. The canary one. The canary yellow. Yay! Oh, la la orange. We've got to get more color crystals. I didn't have her when I was a kid. And she was the one I always wanted because she was French. Well, you'll notice that Rainbow Bright's rainbow isn't a complete rainbow. It's just orange, yellow, green. Some people aren't included. Red. Blue. Indigo, you know who you are. You're not coming to this party. The Bengals were all over the house. My brother loved them, my sister loved them. I too loved the Bengals. Walk Like an Egyptian comes out and everybody is doing that stupid dance. What's that about? <laughs> like anyone goes around walking like an Egyptian. I remember thinking if we could come up with like a dance crave, you know, like the Watusi, that it could be actually kind of cool. Walk like an Egyptian. I remember as a kid not getting it. I didn't walk like that. 
they do not. They walk like this. I just gotta remember that Susanna Hoffs never looked in the camera straight ahead. You walk like an Egyptian. I like to find a face to sing to. And so you I just kinda like looked over at that person and I kinda looked over at that person. Maybe she should have gone. Ah. All this was alluding to it, sort of creating an Egyptian culture, which I, I'm not sure was accurate. Have you been to Cairo? Shame on you, Bengals. Shame on you. Awesome. Dallas was just the filthy rich and all their problems, and don't we love to watch it? I can't marry Jenna. It would be wrong. It's you that I want to marry. The Bobby Ewing character, he seemed like the voice of reason of the family. Patrick Duffy was a good man trying to do the right thing. Well, in an act of heroism to save his wife, he got run over by a car. Because as we know in Texas, from George W. Bush, everyone's drinking while they're driving. Come on, he just got hit by a car, please. Bobby was dead. Bobby was very good looking, and they wanted to bring Bobby back on the show. They were like, oh, they just want ratings. That's what it was. Didn't they seem to realize that maybe they should keep Patrick Duffy on there, that he was probably pulling in a lot of viewers? My homeboy in the back arguing over, look, you better step my paper up. The whole Bobby Ewing coming back from the dead thing on Dallas was ridiculous and annoying in the most soap opera superhero kind of way ever. What's that writer's meaning like? Like, dude, we got no choice. We gotta make it a dream. What the f It was all a dream. And a marvelous dream it was. Why didn't everybody just die and come back to life? Why weren't there just like elephants walking by and stuff like that? I mean, she had the most linear dream of anyone I'd ever seen. I was like, oh, you've got to be kidding me. I've been wasting the last five years watching this crap. When it was all just a dream, that insulted my intelligence. I, I just, I flipped right over to Dynasty at that point. It's over. None of that happened. I was 86. In the beginning, there was Howard the Duck. Howard the Duck makes Gilu like Gone with the Wind. Are you ready for an incredible story? That was one of the worst movies ever made. Everybody was excited about the movie that was going to have the duck. Where am I? Cleveland. We were all on the edge of our seats, and then it came out, and we decided maybe this duck has laid an egg. I'm a dead duck. A duck movie! Howard the Duck! <laughs> what are you, crazy? I saw this movie, Did the Duck Talks! Howard the Duck is the story of a duck who is transported from duck world to people world. No thank you. You saw duck breasts in it. I loved that movie when I was a kid. And I was in love with um, Leah Thompson. She had the band. They were hot. Oh, Howard, you really are the worst. <laughs> Leo Thompson is a struggling artist, and if duck love is a way for her to get ahead, she knows she has to do it. Howard's a special duck. You know, he's not just your average duck. There was certainly a will-they-or-won't-they quality about it. Yes. Ultimately, they did. And they did a lot. Let's go for it, Mr. Macho. He wasn't sure how this all was going to work, <laughs> but he was going to give it a shot. Howard the Duck was by far the most appealing anthropomorphized duck in film. Howard the Duck. Heartwarming tale. Heartwarming tale of a duck. Yeah, that movie was horrible. Talk about a rotten day. Coming up, the guy who put the pretty in pretty boy. I'm watching that movie thinking, that, well, Denise hot, but I want to do Rob. Plus, cracking open Al Capone's vault. What will it be inside the vault? Will it be suits, cigars, gold, Jimmy Hoffa and an oil drum? And unlocking the mysteries of Miami sound machine lyrics. No, you can't control your so do the conga beat. Next on I Love the 80s Strikes Back, 1986. But first, log on to VH1.com for everything 80s. Artist info, photo galleries, CD purchases, and great 80s trivia games. Oh, no.
Gem of 1986. As we go a little something like this. Hit it. What's up, baby? This is Doug E. Fresh. I'm still in the house with you. Tell me if y'all know this one. The hip hop classic of 1986. Run DMC, Aerosmith, Walk This Way. Aight? I wanted to talk to you about last night. Oh, what an amazing coincidence. That's what I'm calling about. Last night. About last night. It was great. It's about two guys. One of them gets a girlfriend, and the other gets really jealous. Dan, never call abroad more than once a week. Jim Belushi, never better. Dan, 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 Dan. Dan. Never say you love him. Was it before he came or after? Talk about commitment folks. You tell someone that you love them. And all you get is a headache. Whoa! No! That's commitment phobia for you. So far, so Demi Moore's name is Debbie, and Rob Lowe's name is Danny. <laughs> that is so 80s. Demi Moore was really popular in the 80s. She was kind of the girl the next door. Oh, God, I love her. She's such a great actress. Demi Moore is so beautiful, but she's so pretty in that movie and so kind of real pretty like she's gorgeous but you can meet her i'm debbie hi and then rob lowe is kind of this like hyper good looking jerk i loved rob lowe so much that i used to pretend that um i was um demi moore he is so gorgeous he was perfect because he was just manly enough but still that kind of unthreatening feminine face you know what your problem is your face <laughs> Yeah, right. Come on, wise up, man. You're too good looking. I'm watching that movie thinking that, well, Demi's hot, but I want to do Rob. I'll never forget that scene in About Last Night right after they have sex. I hope you didn't wake Mrs. Bolter. I was just like, oh my God, naked. You know, like you really, like you saw his ass. Yeah, I may be easy, but I'm not stupid. And then it was also like softcore porn suddenly. Even as a kid, I was like, oh, oh my God, they're naked in a tub. Oh. Very dirty, very racy, very hot. And they're grinding, they're grinding. And she's having a full on orgasm. Oh. Oh. Then she says, oh, you're so good. Oh, you're so good. That's a good sex scene. Yeah, that was a really good one. It was very intimate, and I liked that about it. You really did feel their feelings for each other. Oh, but you say that to all your guys. Yep, and they believe it. <laughs> awesome. The late Chicago gangster supreme Al Capone will be the subject of an upcoming syndicated television special, the climax of which will be the opening of a mysterious vault before live cameras. Yeah, 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 Al Capone's vault. That was great. Al Capone's vault. That just that just makes you laugh just hearing. I watched it. We all did. We were opening up Al Capone's vault. Who couldn't? How could you not watch? I got sucked in by the hype to see what was going to be in Al Capone's vault. And plus Geraldo's, just, you know, award-winning journalistic capabilities. That was a bold move to go live. And it totally blew up in his face. But then you open it up and uh, nothing in there. It's like a chair. Chair. A little note. Ha <laughs> ha, fooled you. about egg all over your face that was uh, that was an omelet i was hoping for some you know thousands of millions of dollars or you know skeletons or something you know and there was you know like a, a can a rusty can there's geraldo on tv whoops there was speculation for weeks what will it be inside the vault will it be suits cigars gold jimmy hoffa and an oil drum what will be in al capone's vault let's see <laughs> Nothing. See you next week. I love six. OP, Ocean Pacific. Ocean Pacific was the way to go, man. Everybody wanted to be a surfer. Yeah, I wore OP. I used to think OP were so cool. I'm not ashamed of owning OP. I mean, that OP was cool. I mean, get off OP. There were these shirts that had the big O and then the P and then usually a sunset sort of 
seen over the Pacific Ocean. It was like you two can have like the cool surfer dude thing. You know, puka shells came separately. Anyone who was hip or groovy would rather have jumped in a river of snot than worn one of them. It was horrible. It was like some surf line that went mainstream. <laughs> but then they stopped being cool. I remember when it happened, like at some point Kmart started carrying OP and that you couldn't wear OP anymore. And, and I was stocked with OP gear too. The guy was looking fly and it was all over. No, you can't control yourself do the conga beat. It was so frantic. The music was like, dun, 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 dun. and so we were like, oh, that's Cuban music. Gloria asked everybody to come on and do the conga, and America responded. Dun, 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 dun. If you can dance, let the music move your feet. Everyone's done the conga, haven't they? Not in Cincinnati, Ohio. The conga dance craze never got that far, I guess. Yeah, I'm okay with the conga. I'm more the caboose. I like the, the back. You know. Gloria and your machine of sound, we're going to conga with you forever. Siempre, Gloria. Siempre. Come on, shake your body, baby. Do the conga. about uh, lawyers in L.A. What do you say? What do we call it? L.A. Law? <laughs> L.A. Law is like uh, good-looking lawyers, which, of course, is ridiculous. Wow, they make money, and they can be cute, and they can get you out of jail. I thought Corbin Burnson was great, you know, as Arnie. Well, he who suffers most suffers in the pocketbook. <laughs> he was the real SOB of the program. Everybody needs one of those people. You've got to tell them how he suffered. Rico. Jimmy was the nice guy, the sweet, suave, nice guy. Suave. I know to many of you the very idea of this sounds offensive. He was the nice, good looking guy at the LA law firm. Yeah, you go find me that guy in real life. Oh, Harry Hamlin, of course. Yeah. I really liked Harry Hamlin. He was great. Could you be a little more specific than that? I'm Harry Hamlin. I'm the most impossibly good-looking man of all time. I am happy to be stuck with you. What's it going to be with us, Kuzak? I don't know. It was the guy from Clash of the Titans and the girl from the Partridge family, Harry Hamlin and Susan Day. They had a great kind of chemistry, the two of them, and you always rooted for them to get together. The favorite character for L.A. Law was the Man. Let me be a lawyer. I just want to tell you that I'm really happy to be working here. Oh, I loved him. And it really helped the mentally challenged people. It showed that they could work in an office. And I really enjoyed him. I love you all. I love you six. Coming up. Who decided to let Crockett sing? What is that? A, a song sung by a, an MD? I'm looking for a ha ha deed live! Plus, Michael Jordan takes over. Nobody had ever seen an athlete like that. Nobody. And Eddie Murphy and his little baby Buddha. Oh yeah, Eddie Murphy with the beanie baby. <laughs> I won't deny. <laughs> <laughs> Next on I Love the 80s Strikes Back, 1986. But first, this public service announcement. When I was 15, 16, I took drugs. And I spent a lot of time hanging out with people who usually I wouldn't even want to deal with. I got really tired of that feeling of letting things happen to me instead of making things happen. But you know, you can't make things happen if you're on drugs. It's just not possible. So look, have a little faith in yourself. Life can be pretty fun if you're straight. Nerds, 1986. What's happening, hot stuff? Getty Watanabe here, bringing you the nerds of 1986. Willie, the nerdy Alf Dad. Rick Moranis, little shop, little shop of horrors nerd. And Cliff Clavin, letter carrying nerd. The nerds of 1986. Trust me, the donger knows. 
Hi. So you're the finder of lost children. I like working with children. Hey, Chandler! Shut up! The Golden Child. Now, this movie I watched a million times, me and my younger brother. I don't want to know what going to it was a lot of hype. He thought it was going to be off the rocker, like training places and Beverly Hills Cop, all that. I mean, he was good, but the movie stunk. <laughs> the plot line is Eddie Murphy versus Bad Mojo to help Little Buddha. You must obtain your life. Tomorrow, you will go with Kinang to Tibet to obtain the dagger. Hey, man, I ain't going to no Tibet. So Eddie's job was to go to Tibet and rescue the golden child. And along the way, I'm not gonna lie to you, there's some wisecracking. Oh yeah, Eddie Murphy with the beanie, baby. I, I, I want the knife. I, I, I want the knife. Let us have the knife. Let him ask him. I said, I, 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 want the knife. I mean, believe he did that. You know what I'm saying? Like, he just started cutting it up. Like, give me, give me, give me the knife, knife. I said, I, 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 that was crazy. So once he got the knife, remember when Eddie had to stab him with the two hands? My dear sweet brother, look The special effects I remember are subpar. It was a little corny. Dick! The lady that was behind the little curtain, and it was like a dragon lady with the tail. Oh, what bad special effects. You will eat. The visual that stuck for me was when they're, they're making the kid his oatmeal. Oh, my guy pushes his spoon into it and blood comes out. I'm like, ha, 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 wrong. You know, that's not going to taste good. It was a roller coaster ride of mystery and thrills and fun and comedy. And it just made me want to be Eddie even more, but a girl. <laughs> On your mark. Get set. Go! Double Dare was obsessed with Double Dare. I used to watch all the time after school, and there was the red team and the blue team. Double Dare is primarily about taunting, is that right? One set of children made to feel superior to the other set of children. I can support this kind of television show. On your mark, get set, go! The host is really Mark. cool. What was his name? Mark Summers. Summers. Mark Summers. I thought Mark Summers was the coolest guy on the planet. Oh! He was the biggest celebrity as far as I was concerned. Hey, Boo Boo, where is the picnic basket? He was like a corny host. What kind of clothing article is a wedgie? It's worth $10. Yeah. And then you can double dare for more money. Double dare. Or you take the physical challenge. Oh, uh, there's number two. There's number three. Basically, let's, let's dump as much crap on children as we possibly can. And hey, let's make a TV show out of it. Go! Get it in there, you have to get it past the line. And Lots of green slime. It's the greatest when some of them just sat there and got a bucket of green slime on their head. <laughs> that was my favorite part. I wanted to get slimed, I really did. Welcome to the Double Dare Obstacle Course. Obstacle Course was like the big ending. Go! Get in there and find that! They go through like the chocolate and, and like the slime and stuff like that. So they come out, they're all greasy and they still had to keep running. The winners of Double Dare would get Nintendo and mountain bikes and, and, and fun prizes. The losers would go to special camps. Special work camps. Three, two, three. What are garbage fail kids, you ask? Well, this is Dyin' Dino, and that's Flat Tyler. Oh, I had thousands of garbage fail kids. I'm so bummed that I, my mom threw them away. Garbage fail kids were these stupid little, like, baseball cards with the grossest looking faces. I think these started out as like a tie-in with garbage pail candy. I don't think I ate the candy too much. Had to keep my teeth pretty. They were just disgusting and so great and funny. I remember Dead Fred, Disgusting Justin, Scary Harry. I remember there was one called Unzipped Zack, which I thought was rather provocative title. And I always thought that if uh, Turned on Tara and Swollen Sue Ellen got together, 
unzipped Zach would be having a whisper in Woody. He's a guy who's uh, surfboarding on uh, on urine, flying out of a toilet. Now that's art. Here's the only Jewish garbage pail kid, Cyclops. It's great. It's like fun with snot on a card. <laughs> Basketball in the 80s was awesome. And then came the Kings. Out of North Carolina, number 23, we call him Mike. Michael Jordan. Nobody had ever seen an athlete like that. Nobody. Long range. Jordan hit. 1986 it was his first foray into the playoffs. Jordan. Here's Michael Jordan. Here he is. The move in the basket. Michael Jordan went in and dropped a 63-point bomb on the Boston Celtics. Oh, what a great shot. Oh, boy. 63 points, and you're looking at an all-time record. That was a pretty much a way of basically him letting everybody know that he was pretty special. I just couldn't believe that he could, you know, pull up 63 and lose. <laughs> you can't think about Michael Jordan without doing this pose right here. And he's taking off at the foul line with that tongue out and just jamming it. It was crazy. He could fly and that tongue would come out. That tongue. <laughs> He started this big phenomenon with his shoes, Air Jordans. These were the first gym shoes that cost $100. I love my Air Jordans. I slept with my Air Jordans. I really thought I was Jordan with my Air Jordans. Well, you know what? You bought the shoes and you couldn't even jump. <laughs> it's like white people were buying the shoes, black people. I don't think Chinese people were buying the shoes. I don't know why they called it Air Jordans, because those were before they even put Air in shoes, man. Those soles are like like a quarter inch thick. I never had a pair of Air Jordans. I refused to pay $100 for some gym shoes. Now some Pradas, some Jimmy Choo's, yeah, but Air Jordan gym shoes? Hmm. I first heard that song, I was like, is that Tubbs? No, that's definitely Crockett. What's Don Johnson doing recording an album? Bobby. Why didn't he just stick to Miami Vice? He was doing well with that. Don Johnson in the video Heartbeat is Woodward and Bernstein in one. He's a muckraker. Don Johnson, I think, is great. Uh, another perfectionist, but he shouldn't sing. And I think he knew that. What is that, a, a song sung by a, an MD? Looking for a hot heartbeat lead. I remember when Don Johnson, when he was dating Barbara Streisand. That's why he recorded an album, because he was going out with Barbara Streisand, and she goes, you know what, this whole singing thing, it's great. you got to try it. Interestingly enough, uh, Don Johnson will nail anything with a heartbeat. That's what that song was about. I'm looking for a heartbeat. That's all I need. Stoked. Hi, I'm Joey Suzu. Oh, I love those. Yeah, I love the Joey Zuzu commercials. It's so fast, it will go from Paris to Rome in two minutes. Oh, those commercials were so funny, and the more they did it, the funnier it got. Those were annoying commercials. These Trooper 2s can carry the whole city of St. Louis. Joey Suzu was a very deadpan, straightforward guy, uh, an actor, David Leisure. I just sold an Isuzu iMark ah! to the queen. I don't know how the ad agency fooled Isuzu into saying, We've got a great new spokesman. He's a guy that lies. He's going to say really good things about your cars that totally aren't true. Everything I say about the four-wheel drive Isuzu Trooper 2 isn't true. May she be struck by lightning. I'm Joe Isuzu. We're like, whatever, wasn't it? It can carry a symphony orchestra. It was so popular that he got his own sitcom out of it. Hi, I'm Santa. Dude, you're never going to have a career after that, are you? He said, yes, I am. Watch me on this sitcom that goes away. Now, Suzu's are still going strong, but Joe, sadly, is not. If you buy soon, Santa says you won't have to pay taxes ever again. Ho, ho, ho. Coming up, did Jeff Goldblum really look like a fly? The fly, best known perhaps for the tagline, be afraid of Jeff Goldblum. Be very afraid of Jeff Goldblum. I'm becoming Brundle Fly. The Fly. Next on I Love the 80s Strikes Back, 1986. 
But first, the what the f*** moment of 1986. Gilbert Gottfried here with your what the f*** moment for 1986. In 1986, Fred Granty, after portraying the lovable gopher on Love Boat for many years, decided to run for Congress in Iowa. And he won. Congressman Gopher. Hey, Iowa. What the f***? I'm working on something that'll change the world and human life as we know it. The fly, best known perhaps for the tagline, be afraid of Jeff Goldblum. Be very afraid of Jeff Goldblum. I'm becoming Brundle Fly. Jeff Goldblum's such a freak that he seemed like a guy who would become a fly. That movie was the most disgusting movie. It was so gross. Ugh. Fly is a story of a guy named Seth Brundle who's trying to create teleportation pods where we can transport each other from one pod to another. What are we waiting for? Let's do it. Shuts the door and perchance there is a fly on the floor of the booth and mayhem ensues. I remember coming out of the theater and seeing evidence that a few people had vomited after the film. <laughs> He walked out of that, just want a shower. Bad, bad complexion. Once you become a fly, bad. The Fly is the only movie to date where I've actually screamed out loud in the theater. And it was in the scene where he arm wrestles the guy. Just like... Mm. Like still, can't, like when that scene's coming up, I'm like... How about the scene where she gives birth? She gives birth to the fly baby? We'll be the ultimate family. <laughs> Holy moly. <gasps> oh, my ear. Oh, my nose. My left testicle. Oh, no! What have I done to myself in the name of science? Nasty boys. Puts it in a jar in the medicine cabinet. He's been collecting his parts like a museum of what he used to be. And then the heartbreaking thing was at the end, the fly creature takes the shotgun and puts it to his own head. This is a fly begging to be killed. Kill, kill me. No, I can't. She loves him so much. No. She takes a sawed-off shotgun and puts two right in the snout. We're left with a very important message in the fly, and that is, it's hard to kill a fly when you love it so much. 30 seconds for all of this? Yeah, why don't you just give it a try? Okay. VH1B in 2003. A year in celebration of the biggest stars, sounds, scenes, and shows. Hmm. Sunday, November 30th. With performances by A Good Old Boy from Detroit. A Country Girl from Another Country. Two Total Outsiders. A band that doesn't play with Hot Wheels. Uh. And a hip hop rocker from another planet. And appearances by the big. Uh. There's no way this list is going to fit.